until God's Word. I saw an accident when I was about 16 years old. We were going down Two Lane Highway, old 25, and a car passed us, and he went down the dip and come back up to the top of the next hill, and he never cut back over on his side of the road and hit a hole truck or a gravel truck head on. A string column went clear through him. His wife went forward and tore Mr. Chin back. That car was a, the engine sitting back in the middle of the front seat, and it just unbelievable. When I saw that story in the paper, there was nothing right. Yes, there was, the picture. They didn't change the picture. But that the story was wrong every bit of it. And I told somebody, they said, how do you know? I said, I saw it. I saw it happen. You look in God's Word. This is the truth. And you need to know the truth. Let me give you some scripture tonight that, uh, that speak about how we can know the truth of God. If you would in your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. In 2 Timothy, uh, it says, Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, refuse, rebuke, with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. You know why I've visited a lot of the churches? I find that the, the word is, is sort of incidental. Uh, you know, there's a difference in teaching, talking about the word and teaching the word. Making the word mean what it says. And it says what it means. In uh, Isaiah 55, and I'm sure that some of you uh, are familiar with that passage. If I can get this thing to work. Hmm. Uh, Isaiah 55, 11. Well, I know what it says, but I can't get it to go there. There we go. Uh, says uh, that my word I, I send out the word, it will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that word unto I have sent it. This is not working. I'm going to have to get my Bible and do that with the old touch. That's the post. Hmm. We've been familiar with that verse, that verse. He says that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish that word unto he has sinned. God's word is what changes lives. God's word is what makes the difference in people's lives when they take it and let it speak to their heart. Listen to what he says in John, uh, uh, the first chapter and verse 20 and uh, verse 12. John, uh, hey, you know what, these, uh, these paper clips is for the way to go. I've done that for years. In John chapter 1 and verse 12, I hope you turn that. He says, but uh, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That is, when you're saved, you're born to be a child of God. We'll read another passage that way. And we're born by the will of God. But look at verse 14. He says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and, uh, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, uh, full of grace and truth. And of His fullness, He says, have we received. 
Here we find that, that we are made a child of God. Uh, the first John chapter 3 and verse 1. And that's one of my little, I have a little smart attitude saying sometimes. Somebody says, you know, what you're going to be like when you're raised in the resurrection? I said, I know exactly what you're going to be like. Then I turned to that verse of Scripture. John 3, 1, he says, behold, Brethren, behold what matter of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Can you imagine this? Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. <laughs> we don't really know, will really. But when he shall appear, we'll be like him, for we'll see him as he is. When God saves us, if you were saved, then you uh, uh, are a child of God. When I was growing up, you might I'd be hard to believe, but I, I wouldn't always do it. Sometimes I'd get in the box. You know, if I, if, if, if I broke my neighbor's window, you know who got to pay for it? My dad. He may not like it, but he, he got to pay for it. Whatever I did, he was responsible for it. I don't know what happened today to some of the things that go. But anyway, if we get in trouble, see who's responsible for it? Our Father. Did you know that God is your Heavenly Father? Yeah. Jesus said, Pray, our Father, which are in Heaven. And, and if we's our father, then we're his child, and he has a responsibility toward us. And we have someone we can always turn to. In fact, he said, cast all of your cares upon me, for I care for you. I tell you, we need to recognize that the power of God 